Welcome back. This is lesson 19.1. In this lesson, we'll learn about the different programming paradigms that you have to understand for A-level computer science. In this lesson, we'll look at what a paradigm is and we'll look at the following paradigms, procedural and functional programming, object-oriented programming and declarative programming. A paradigm is used in ordinary English and it means a model or example of something, particularly a good example. In computer science, we use programming paradigm to represent different styles of programming. If you're my student, we've learned to program in Python and not all paradigms can be fully implemented using the Python programming language. The four paradigms that you need to know about are procedural programming, object-oriented programming, declarative programming and functional programming. In procedural programming, we break the problem up that is called decomposition into smaller, simpler problems. And then we write short subroutines to solve those problems. These are often called procedures in modern programming. The procedures are then called from the main program. You might have come across the term modular programming to refer to this type of programming. Procedural programming was invented many decades ago, and it's a good model for how we would structure and build a program. Functional programming uh, is, well, it's got a number of different meanings. As you know, a function is slightly different from a procedure in that it returns a value. A function returns a value while a procedure just carries out some tasks. In functional programming, a lot of use is made of functions as opposed to procedures. Values are altered and then passed often to another function. There's a number of features of functional programming and one is the avoidance of global variables. Functional programming is used in a narrower sense as well to mean a very mathematical form of programming where everything is reduced to mathematical functions. But overall, it's, it's a loosely used term with a range of different meanings. Both functional and procedural programming involve decomposition. That means breaking up a big problem into smaller problems that are easier to solve. And there's a, a number of advantages to this, which is why it's so widely used in programming. It makes our program shorter and easier to read. It makes the problems that we've got to solve easier to solve because they're broken into smaller problems. Most modern commercial or professional programming is done via teamwork and decomposition means the task can be split amongst a team of programmers. It also helps with testing. We can reuse the parts and it's easier to edit. In short, there are so many advantages to decomposition that it's a characteristic of anything but the very simplest programming activity nowadays. We have learned about object oriented programming and this is a third paradigm. I've got some more lessons about object oriented programming following this one to remind you of some of the features of OOP. Uh, but if we briefly remember, we define classes which have attributes and methods and then we create objects that are instances of the class. And I'm going to talk a lot more about this in the next three lessons. Object oriented programming is used a lot in the modern world. It's more common than plain procedural or functional programming. And uh, there's a number of reasons why I'm just going to quickly review those now. It, it takes more work to set the system up to do OOP, but it, once it's set up, it's simpler and easier to generate multiple objects. It gives a lot of centralized control 
and it forces you to plan a program that reflects the existence of the real world or um, a game world which consists of objects. It is very widely used and I think this reflects its extreme adaptability and usefulness in modern programming. The final programming paradigm that I'd just like to mention briefly is declarative programming. We're going to do more declarative programming later in the year. In declarative programming, you don't so much set out the steps or actions that you want the program to perform. You more describe the thing that you want to see or the end state that you want to achieve. And the computer produces a result to match what you have declared. Declarative programming languages are therefore very useful. You don't have to devise all the, the steps, but they're much less flexible. And the two declarative programming languages that we're going to learn are uh, HTML, where you declare what you want to see in a web page, and SQL, where you declare what outputs you want from a database. So we will look more at those. So declarative programming, uh, much, much less work in general to produce the result that you want. Uh, but on, on the other hand, much more restricted in what you can do with them. So let's just very briefly recap. This has been a very short run through the paradigms. That's because we've done a lot about these paradigms already, or we will do more in the future. So the paradigms are the different ways of writing computer programs. Some paradigms are very closely linked to particular programming languages. Procedural and functional come together as a general modular approach to programming which has been around for 50 or 60 years minimum. Object-oriented programming is a more recent paradigm but nowadays is very very widely used and declarative programming is used within certain fields such as web design and very useful within those fields. So, so if you're my student, we do have an activity. I've created a quiz on programming paradigms. And in the next two or three lessons, I'm going to look at, in slightly more depth at the object oriented paradigm. OK, bye for now.